Hello, my name is Vince Farrell and I'm a Senior Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video I want to show you the basics of creating an assembly. I need to create a hinge assembly and add it to a door. I already have the parts design, so I'll use the new command to create an assembly. Here, I can choose the generic assembly template or click on advanced to specify a custom template. Once I start a new assembly, the begin assembly command starts automatically. If I had any files open, they would show up in the open documents box. I can expand this section to see a preview. There are already options checked on such as automatic browse when creating a new assembly, which will open up the browser. I'll navigate to the file I want and open it. Notice I can select the configuration display state when I'm adding the part, but I can also change that later on. Once I've selected it, having the graphics preview option check will allow me to see it in the graphics area. This last option allows you to rotate the part before you place it, which I'll use to make the hinge plate vertical. Notice while I'm moving the cursor around in the graphics area, the part moves along with it. If I click somewhere in the graphics area, it will place the part in the assembly at that spot. However, I recommend when you put in the first part that you hit the green check in the property manager. This will place the part at the origin of the assembly and fix it in space. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at the user interface. When working in an assembly, the assembly tab is on in the command manager. We see this icon in the feature manager tree to indicate this is an assembly. Moving down the feature manager tree, there are the same folders that we would see in the part, along with the standard front, right, top planes, and origin. These are the assembly reference planes. If I expand the part, I can see that it has its own reference planes in origin. When I clicked OK to place it, the part's planes were aligned with the assembly's planes. There's an F next to the part name, which means it's fixed in space and cannot move. In other words, all of its degrees of freedom have been locked. I can also see which is the current configuration. I want to add in another part, so I'll use the insert components command. Again, because there's no other part open, an explorer window opens up. Otherwise, using the browse button will accomplish the same thing. Now, I'll pick the hinge pin to add in. I could use the rotate toolbar, but this time, I'll just place the pin close to the plate. I don't want to hit the green check because I want to be able to move the pin. Looking in the feature manager tree, I can see that the pin can move, indicated by the minus sign next to the name. To translate it in space, left click a face and drag. To rotate it, right click a face and drag. Just a reminder, I can't do that with the plate because it's fixed. However, I can right click on it and select float to change that. Before I made a part, I like to move it close to its final position. This makes it easier for me to predict how SOLIDWORKS will apply the mates. Speaking of mates, let's add some. I'll hit the mate command up here. As you can see, there are many different mates and categories of mates, but I just need the standard ones. You can pre-select the mate you want, but I like to select the entities that I want to mate and let SOLIDWORKS take a guess at the mate. Usually this is correct, but can be changed. I'll select the outside of the pin and the outside cylindrical face of the plate. Notice that the pin moves to the correct position and a mate toolbar pops up with the concentric mate selected. I don't have to choose the inside face on the plate because the software is mating the center axes. Here, I can change the type of mate or flip the alignment of the mate. Here's the undo button and the green check. Keep in mind that the mate hasn't been added until you click the green check. I'll rotate around the entire assembly and move the pin so that I can select both flat faces and make those coincident. After selecting OK, the mates have been added to this box. Once I'm done with the mate command, I select OK up here. Now that there are mates in the assembly, I can expand the folder to see them. This is helpful for seeing all of the mates in the assembly but when you're looking for a mate that pertains to a part, you can expand the part to view this folder. 
Clicking on a mate highlights the entities involved in it. This symbol means that the mate keeps the component in position. Even though I've added mates, the minus is still next to the pin. That's because I can still rotate the pin like so. I don't need that rotation, so I'll right click on the concentric mate and select lock rotation. The minus goes away and all of the degrees of freedom are locked. Lastly, I need to add in a second hinge plate. I could use insert components again, but it might be easier to copy the first one. I can do this by selecting it in the feature manager tree, holding control, and dragging it into the graphics area. Before I made it, I have another configuration that I want to use. By right clicking on the part, I can select the correct configuration here. Now I'll position it for mating. I'm going to use another method of mating bypassing the mate command. I'll select the cylindrical face of the plate then hold control and select the face of the pin. This pops up the mate toolbar where I can just select the mate I want and move on. I'll do the same thing to the flat faces. I'm not going to add any more mates because I don't want to keep the hinge from rotating. I'll save the assembly. I want to create a new assembly with the hinges and the door. Instead of selecting the new command, I'll expand the arrow next to it and select Make Assembly from Part Assembly. I'll place the hinge. It's fixed, but I'll change it to floating. I'll add in a door and mate the hinge to it. For the last mate, I'll use a distance mate to specify how far apart I want the faces to be. Now the hinge assembly is a sub-assembly. If you recall, in the hinge assembly the hinge could rotate, right? However, when you place a sub-assembly in an assembly, the positions of the parts are locked in the last saved position. I can show the rotation of the hinge by right-clicking on it and selecting Make Flexible. Keep in mind that this isn't the default behavior because it requires more processing. It's recommended to leave the subassemblies rigid in large assemblies as much as possible. Hopefully this video showed you the basics of creating your own assemblies. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching. <music>